and good morning to everyone, except for those of us on the East Coast, and to you, enjoy your lunch hour. Uh, I'm glad to be able to use the forum of this uh, webinar to present this program. Perhaps my motivation is selfish. I enjoy staying at home. And so I'm glad to reach out to some of you across the country in a with a topic that I think you'll find of interest. And I look forward to the uh, discussion and questions that we'll have afterwards. Well, Jason, my first snag, I am not advancing my slide here. Let's try this one. There we go. Let's try it that way. Uh, Mark Twain <clears throat> is uh, claimed to have said the following. It ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. And that's kind of the uh, premise of the <clears throat> presentation I'd like to make today, is that there are myths that have been promulgated over the years. Welding is no different. <clears throat> and if we believe those myths, in fact, we may get ourselves into a lot of trouble. My approach today is going to be to identify the myth. And as is often the case with myths, there's often some truth behind these myths. So we'll identify where there's some truth, we'll identify whether there's some error, and uh, finally bring all of this to conclusion by discussing the facts about the situation. There's a popular TV show out, of course, that's called Mythbusters, and in all, uh, with all credit to those folks, uh, I'd like to suggest that today we're going to be busting 10 welding myths. Now, I don't know where, um, I, how I came to number 10, because when I was reviewing this, I found out I'd have 11. So I threw in one free one. Uh, we're actually going to address 11 items. Dragnet was famous for the detective who used to look at people and say, just the facts, ma'am, that detective played by Jack Webb. Well, <clears throat> we're going to try to get to the facts and make sure that as structural engineers, we understand how this information impacts our daily work. With that as an introduction, let's start with myth number one. The myth, the only full strength weld is a complete joint penetration groove weld, or CJP. Perhaps you use the terminology full penetration or even the abbreviated form full pen. But the myth is that the only way I get full strength is by using a CJP. Allow me to define what I mean by full strength. The term full strength is used here to designate the development of the full static strength of the weaker of the attached base metals. Now, for some of you, you deal with cyclically loaded structures. And once we're into fatigue, well, we usually leave behind this term full strength altogether. This term is usually reserved for statically loaded structures, which is typical of most of our building type applications. Here we have a CJP groove weld in a butt joint. And I suspect that's what many of us think of when we're thinking about full strength joints. We could have a CJP groove weld in a T joint. And as shown on the screen, this would be another example of a full strength weld. Here's our CJP in the T-joint, but alternately, we could join the T-joint with fillet welds. And if the fillet welds are made large enough, they could duplicate the strength of the attached member. So let's develop this concept of fillet welds for just a moment. Not only could I have fillet welds, but I ha could have partial joint penetration group welds, PJPs, with reinforcing fillet welds and the combination could be made large enough so as to generate a full strength connection. So here we have T joints where the notion of a CJP being the full only full strength detail has been challenged. Let's look at what AWS D1.1 says. As a bit of a preview or perhaps review for most of you, when you specify standards such as AISC's uh, steel specification, by reference, you get AWS D1.1. 
when you have a slide with the banner across the top, like you're seeing on the screen, this is a direct quotation out of the code. And you can find the reference, in this case, clause 2.3.5.3.